<laughs> oh, nobody says that. Oh, it's like Kali Chai. <laughs> I was wondering what is black tea in, in Hindi, and there's all oh, people say Kali Chai, but nobody says that. <laughs> yeah, we all say black tea. <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> that's easy enough. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So I hope everybody had a good day. Yeah? Good? Yeah? Oh, wonderful. Uh, I like to see that. Good smiles. <laughs> Very good. So today, first day, uh, I like to spend a little bit more time to unpack what we've previously seen, just to make sure that it's, it's well understood. So it will be a little bit more expanding on yesterday's briefing on the six R's and how this meditation works. But this time we'll add a, a, a few suttas, a few suttas to uh, find our bearing through, through this journey. And so I think the theme of this talk will be a little bit around uh, beginning the inner journey and the compass and how to navigate uh, this yes yes please so how to navigate this inner journey of meditation and wholesome mental development kusala dhamma bhavanaya and using the six r's as our guide to aim at the qualities of the first level of meditation the first jhana because that's where we're going uh, slowly, dire dire. Oh, all good? Yeah. Okay, good. And so how, how to find our bearing and how does this work? And where, where is all uh, what we're talking about in the suttas? Where, where, where do we find this in, in the suttas themselves? So just so you know that I'm not making anything up here. <laughs> 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 Yeah, this monk's telling us to smile and all these things. I, I'm not sure, but I'll show you. <laughs> and so much of what we do here is about directing our mind to the, to the right direction, basically. So uh, I like to open with this uh, sh very short sutta from the Anguttara Nikaya. And uh, it's... Panihitaccha uh, <clears throat> sutta. So that means well-directed, basically, well-engaged. I was, uh, when I was learning in the, I was learning Singhala, Singhalese in Sri Lanka, and my teacher, this other monk, would always <coughs> correct me on, not say ah, but uh, <laughs> acha, <laughs> not acha. <laughs> so we, I always uh, had a good time. I guess it's a classic Westerner <laughs> mistake. So, uh, and it goes, I'm going to need to make this a little bit bigger. Monks, just as if a grain of, of rice or barley, yab, was not well directed, would be stepped on by a hand or a foot that this grain of rice or barley would break through the skin and cause blood to surface, that is impossible. Why? Because the grain is not well directed. Uh, <coughs> is the same monks for a person whose mind is not well directed, that their mind could break through confusion, cause understanding to surface or clear awareness, vidya, <coughs> and experience nibbana, that is impossible. If our mind, you know how a, how a grain of rice would have to be really well straight and well directed to actually yes. puncture through our skin, because if, even if a little bit sideways, it wouldn't really work. I know it's kind of a, <laughs> a painful analogy, but <laughs> I think it has a quite a really understanding, uh, a really uh, interesting image to it, though, uh, the, to puncture through like the veil of ignorance, basically, the veil of not seeing things properly out to Nibbana, basically. Um, 
And so that the same thing with a mind that is not well directed, uh, there is no way that we can actually experience Nibbana, that we can experience the, the, these things properly, the release uh, that the Buddha taught. So why? Because the mind is not well directed. Would you like? And then is the well directed, but you can. Uh, so monks, just as if a grain of rice or barley, which was well directed, would be stepped on by a hand or a foot, that this grain of rice would break through the skin, cause blood to surface. That is possible. Why? Because the grain is well directed. Samma panihitatta, basically. In the same way, monks, for a person whose mind is well directed, that their mind could break through ignorance or confusion, cause understanding to surface and experience Nibbana. That is possible. Why? Because the mind is well directed. And of course, now we're talking about Nibbana, and you know, it seems very far away, but <laughs> Uh, this is a gradual puncturing through. So right now, at this level, you might be thinking or experiencing, oh, there's a lot of thought in the mind. <laughs> there's a lot of distractions. And slowly, this we, as we learn to direct our mind properly, we will puncture through that. There is a space where this thinking kind of goes away. And you will experience that uh, quite soon. And that's where basically we are aiming at with our compass, is that that is the direction. And I thought this was a really interesting uh, way of introducing the, this kind of direction because the, the Buddha is actually really talking about it here. How we need to direct our mind properly so that we can see these states and break through them and go beyond. <laughs> so, uh, I think I'd like to spend a little bit of time to maybe see uh, each of the spoke of the eight spoke path, the eightfold path, the uh, uh, atang. There we go. Ario <laughs> atangiko maggo, and um, to break it down a little bit. Uh, this is a bit of a new formula for me, so I'm getting my bearings uh, with the Pali and how I'm going to speak in English and how, how much Pali I'm going to put in there. But um, usually I translate uh, Samma as wise in this particular case. So uh, just so that you're, you become familiar a little bit with the way that I will be explaining things. This, uh, this Eightfold Path, basically, which starts with uh, Samaditti, uh, in English is usually translated as right view. And I like to call it wise understanding, just so you can bear with me when I'm talking. <laughs> and this Samaditti here is our compass. So this is what we're going to use to find our bearing find the direction. So what do we need to understand? So what is this wise understanding? And that's part of the uh, aggregate of Panya, basically. You are all probably familiar with this. <laughs> I'm trusting. And so uh, this, this Panya is, uh, what, what is, what is this wisdom? What is this discernment that we need to have? This panya, panya can be translated as wisdom, but again, it has this connotation more of discernment, uh, because we need to discern between states, mental states, how unwholesome states work and how wholesome states work, the difference between the two, kusala dhamma and akusala dhamma. So that is the very beginning of the path, basically understanding that the four noble truths are applicable in regards to wholesome states and unwholesome states. The wholesome states bring up joy, they bring up happiness, 
they are the seven supports of awakening. That is what is helping us collect our mind, mitta, karuna, mudita, upekka. The development of those, uh, the piti, sukkang, uh, pasadi, all the seven supports of awakening, uh, sati, dhamma, vichaya, uh, virya, piti, pasadi, samadhi, upekka. And so these are all wholesome states. And these are all for our own benefit. <coughs> Good. Okay. TK. Okay. Good. <laughs> so to, to know this, the wholesome states, and then the unwholesome states are for our own detriment. So uh, anger, impatience, jealousy, hatred, uh, animosity. All these states, uh, they're not really for our own good. When we experience them, we're not happy. Nobody that's angry is happy. Have you ever been angry happy? No. 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 <laughs> because that's opposite. <laughs> so to, to know this, this is wise understanding. This is samaditti. So we're not doing anything yet, but we're learning. We're, we're knowing this. And the direction mainly that what comes out of this is samma sankappo, which, which is uh, wise intention, what I call wise intention. Does everybody know what, what the three intentions are, the, the three sankappas? In sankappo, my In Pali? Uh, yes. <coughs> Mekkamma Abhyapada, yes. <laughs> yes, Ahwi Himsa. Yes, so I like to see those as basically letting go. Of course, it's renunciation, but when we say that, it sounds really big and kind of monastic feeling, and it, it doesn't mean that you have to renounce everything in your life. You have to renounce kamma chanda, kamma chanda. Yes. So, uh -huh. and that is also translated again as sensual desires, but it can also it can also simply mean engaging in the senses all the time, because uh, it doesn't mean that uh, you you want everything and you just like you're a really greedy person. It can also mean that, but. <laughs> Uh, mainly, it's also just engaging in the senses all the time, you know, for, uh, for happiness, seeking happiness in the senses. That's what the Buddha said, this is the happiness of craving, basically. And uh, to know uh, the difference between uh, Nikkama and Kama Chanda. So basically, Nikkama is letting go of <clears throat> the, the six senses and engaging in them constantly, which brings great, great relief, great uh, joy. And also, obviously, um, Bhyapada and Abhyapada. So, uh, moving away from anger, uh, going towards loving kindness, compassion, uh, rejoicing in others, other people's fortune. Uh, mudita, or just simply joy. Uh, the, the third one, uh, I like to see it, Ahuihimsa is like uh, non-violence or uh, you know, uh, non-cruelty sometimes is translated as. But I like to see it as um, basically as calm also because the violent mind is the mind that's always agitated, right? It's the, and it's kind of like the third major hindrance that we have. We have like, oh, I want this. Oh, I want the, I'd like a chocolate bar. You're meditating and you're like, oh, like I'd like, a, what would it be? Mm. What's, what's somebody's, uh, <laughs> I feel like, uh, what was this? Um, Papdi, Papdi. <laughs> Papdi, isn't, isn't that the dessert? So <laughs> this thing, <laughs> this thing, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, oh, I want so pubby. <laughs> and then, um, 
and then um, avyapada can just also be um, uh, some something you don't like. You just like um, thinking, uh, oh, this person said that to me, and like, oh, I don't, I don't like it. I don't want it. And restlessness is just the mashup of the two. It's like just constantly agitated, basically, and that's quite violent on its own. So uh, these would be the three main intentions that come out of samaditi. So samaditi is like the compass and samasankapo is like the direction. So in one way we have these three very awesome states which we're aiming at, which are showing us the way. And then the opposite is the three unwholesome states. And so these two, samaditi and samasankapo, constitute panya. So, this, the Buddha says, is uh, the, the beginning of the path, but how does this come into place? Uh, first is in the small discourse called Parato Ghoso, and uh, in the Book of Two of the Anguttara Nikaya, where the Buddha says that this wise understanding comes through by uh, the voice of another, Parato Ghoso, and um, wise attention. Yoniso <laughs> manasikara. And so these two, uh, basically we, first of all, we need a Buddha. <laughs> we need a Buddha that points us the way and says, here, this is what is going on here. And this is the compass. Here, I'll give you the compass. And this is Kalyanamitta. Kalyanamitta, the wise friendship basically, that we need to start the path, to have the wisdom. We need to hear this. Uh, for example, uh, for a long time, I was looking at many different traditions and ways of meditation for many years, and um, it was a long journey, and I, I tried a lot of things, and uh, my meditation was terrible for many years. <laughs> it, was, it was good, but... Uh, after a while, it felt like uh, I was missing something. I was missing a few, you know, it felt like I wasn't really practicing, you know, what I should be practicing. And then I heard the Buddha, and then I heard the Buddha's words, and then I heard uh, the suttas and the discourses and the teacher who could show me that. And that's how uh, I realized a lot of things. And so basically, on my own, I could never have figured that out. I tried, but I mean, and that's what it means to be a Buddha, is you figure all of this on your own, you become a Buddha. And then all the rest are shravakas, basically. All of us here that get to hear this wonderful wisdom, then we're all following in the path of this, basically, uh, this being who broke through uh, the Buddha. So this is how wisdom comes to be. And so when we hear it, we listen to it, and then we apply our minds to seeing it and to, to see that in our own lives. <laughs> and then the virtue, which is uh, samma vaja, samma kamanto, samma ajivo. Uh, we, I like to see it as the path that we're work walking on, basically, as we're letting go of unwholesome states and then cultivating wholesome states, then our path is becoming wider and nicer, clean, strong, and elevated, and uh, not in the mud, you know, <laughs> nice, clear path, and then we're walking on that. And this is what uh, virtue is kind of like uplifting us and uh, giving, uh, allowing us to walk this, this, this trail. And then the wise, wise practice, uh, samma vayamo, then is basically what we're doing, is the action, is the walking. So all of this is really, is really nice, is really beautiful, uh, this uh, wise understanding, this uh, wisdom, this wise, wise intention, and the virtues, and all this. But then wise practice is when we put it into practice. So if, if we're not walking the path, then that we know the path or not is, doesn't make much of a difference. So wise practice, it, that's why 
Oh, okay. <laughs> and that is why wise practice is so special, Sammawayamo, is that all of this is really lovely and beautiful, but really it all boils down to the core, the heart of the path, which is wise practice. We need to do this. We need to walk this path. Uh, like in English, like these boots are made for walking. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so uh, so the Eightfold Path is made to be practiced. That's it's the whole of the the point. <laughs> chapas, 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 chapas. <laughs> Walk those, those chapels. <laughs> Doesn't work so well. Okay, and and then what what comes next? The little quiz in uh, in the path. Samma, uh, yeah, samma wayamo. Then samma sati. Yes, samma sati. Very good. They're following. <laughs> samma sati, and I I like to call this wise awareness. And this is basically, of course, the the Buddha said it's a, the four satipatthanas, but what does that really mean is to see things for what they are. So as we're walking on this path, we see a tree. We know that's a tree. We see a mountain, that's a mountain. We see the path, that's the path. You know? See things for what they are clearly. When there is a tree falling in the way, it's a tree falling in the way. And uh, it's not, we don't go up to it and like go, oh, what am I going to do? Oh, no, this tree is, oh, it's in my way. And, oh, I, what am I supposed to do? But, no, you just step over it. It's a hindrance. <laughs> so when we have these distractions in the mind, this is just a distraction. It's just a hindrance. It's not you. You don't have to go like, oh, but why, who, like this person, like, no, oh, like, oh, no, it's just a hindrance. It's not to be taken personal, it's just a conditioning of the mind. It's not you, it's not personal, don't take it personal. Just smile, 6R, laugh at your mind. It's just the conditioned habit of the mind. It's just a tree falling in your way. You just need to step over it. <laughs> Good, good, good. So in technical terms, this is uh, seeing body as body, then seeing sensations as sensations, then seeing mind as mind, and seeing dhamma as dhamma, like dhamma principles as dhamma principles. So it's not, oh no, my body's getting old, oh no, my body's uh, it's sick, oh my, my, me, my, no, it's just body, just body. And just that, see how mind becomes cool. It becomes calm. It's like, no, it's just body. Uh, as we move through this, we learn to use this vocabulary more and more because uh, there's not so much association <coughs> with these things anymore. It's just, uh, well, the sensations like, oh, I bunked my toe. There's a painful sensation, but that's it. It's not, it's not me. It's, not, it's just the sensation that's arising. And same thing for the mind. The mind can be in all these states. It can be, it can be, um, it can be joyful. It can be excited. It can be restless. Um, of course, there there is a direction. There is the wholesome. We're always aiming at the wholesome. But when we notice, all of a sudden, there's anger. We're not like ripping our hair out, saying like, "Oh no, there's anger," and like adding to the anger, it's just, that would be ridiculous. So we just notice, oh, there's anger in me. Oh, there's not anger in me. Oh, my mind is distracted. No big deal. Six R. And oh, my mind is calm. It's collected. My mind is collected. So this is just the mental state. And the one that I like the most is definitely understanding uh, the hindrances as just being hindrances. These are just patterns of the mind. We have cultivated them in some way. We have brought them up 
nurture them in little sneaky ways that we're learning to adjust here and then uh, so that it can become straighter and straighter but when they arise we don't lose our mind over the distraction it's just a distraction it's just a hindrance it's not you it's okay and so maybe venerable can tell us what's the next samma oh very good <laughs> I just thought I'd include you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> That's my input for the night. Yes. I'm done. I'm done working. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Put you on the spot. <laughs> Good. So, Samma Samadhi. And what is Samma Samadhi? What, what is the definition that the Buddha gives in the Vibhanga Sutta? That's a quiz test. Oh, this is also found in that, the, yeah that's that's close but he um, he says uh, it's four things ah, it's getting closer <laughs> getting closer but what is that That is, that is one jhana. Yes, the first jhana. Ah, four jhanas. Yes, ah, tike, tike, nirupa jhana. Yes. So in the Vibhanga Sutta, he would say, this is first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. Yes. Which comes into what you were saying. Uh, this, um, hmm. I, I just love this because it's just like testing my poly all the time. It's great. I love it. Um, huh? Ekagatta, yes. Chetasikagatta. Chitasikagatta. Chitasikagatta. Yes. Chitasikagatta. Yes. So this, uh, and this is again uh, a word that causes uh, some, some contro controversies. Ekagatta, um, which can mean w one pointed. But also, ikaga means tranquil also, so calm. Um, yes? <laughs> yeah, so there's some debates around that. Um, I, think, I think some people know where I stand, but um, the, the goal of uh, this explanation right now is to basically uh, understand what is Samma Samadhi in terms of the inner journey that we're on, basically the, this meditation path, the Aryo Atangiko Maggo. So, <laughs> um, this, these four jhanas are the roadmap, basically, that we are using. As we learn to use our discernment, our Samaditti, Samma Sankapo, and then walk the path of the virtue and wise practice. We start to see things for what they are because we start to see things, anger is anger, it's not beneficial, it's much better to have metta, karuna, mudita, upeka. And then um, as we practice this, the mind will free itself and it will go through stages of release, basically. And these are the four stages. So, uh, Samma Samadhi is basically just the Buddha saying here, when you practice right effort, this will happen to your mind. So it's simply showing us the, the landmarks of release. Station sign. Yes, station. Okay. Yes. yes. Station. Mm -hmm. so, Mumbai people understand only train track. <laughs> <laughs> Great. If you take the wrong yes. train and wrong track, yes, yes. and you want to reach somewhere uh, else, Yes, yes. Then you cannot reach, right? mm, yes. So you have to take the right train. Yes. And it has to show yes. the right stations. And then you know that you are progressing. Yes. You know, you're moving right there. Yes. So that's what I'm saying. That's so what. Yogya train is going to be a yogya station. It's 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 going to be a yogya station. Good. 
Okay? Yeah. Okay. That's what you were talking about the Mumbai is developing in the strip. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because by the ocean, I, I was listening. <laughs> Good. So you need to take the train. Okay. Yeah. If you take a wrong train, yeah. you go to the wrong train. Yes, yes. Yes. I, I'd like to refer, but I don't know enough about the geography of Mumbai yet. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> And so, now that we've explored a little bit of the Ariwatangi um, what, where would the six R's be in there? I said it many times. Samaditi uh, recognized. Oh, yes, yes, very good. Yes. Uh -huh. Samaditi recognized. Wisdom. Six R's, But. Six hours is a bit what we're doing, right? Samma Wayamo, very good. Yes, Samma Wayamo. So, yes, recognize. <coughs> recognize is a, a kind of a over overseeing step, but the main bulk of the six hours is basically right effort, wise practice. Mm -hmm. So I just thought it would be, uh, it's always a good thing to know all of the Eightfold Path and then where, um, where are the six R's in all of this and what do we practice because it's important for us to be able to, end, like, to understand these, these, these things when we, uh, when we think about it. One of the things that uh, I, was, uh, I figured out in my previous meditation techniques was um, I couldn't understand the Eightfold Path. <laughs> I was thinking, well, you know, I really, like, I understand, like, what it is. I understand, like, right view, right intention, like, all of this, like, the virtue and samadhi. But I don't understand, like, what, what I'm doing in relation to the Eightfold Path. Like, what, what does it bring? How does it work together? Uh, how does one pointing my mind towards something will actually make me understand this? Uh, it didn't make a lot of sense. But when I understood this practice, which is about letting go of hindrances and bringing up wholesome states, then right effort made sense. Then wise awareness made sense. Then uh, the jhanas made sense. Then wise understanding, wise intention, Basically, that is meditation. We're just changing our mind, bhavana. And then the virtue made sense because it's just as you become a more loving, compassionate person, obviously you're going to not kill living beings. Obviously, you're not going to steal other people's things. Uh, so it, it made a lot more sense to me after I started uh, practicing in that, in that way. Well, I just wanted to uh, say that it was uh, right effort, basically. Right effort? The, the six R's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. mm. Yes. Samma Vaya. Samma Vaya. Samma Vaya. Well, recognize is basically is part of Panya. Panya. It's, it's part of, yeah. But. <coughs> yes, yes, that's, that's kind of that's, why. That's, yeah, yeah. that's what I wanted to tell you. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, yes, yes, yes. That if you're doing six R, you're yes. doing the Atthangi Komagu. Yes, of course. Yes, yes. So yes. How, how <laughs> you then you do it? Yes. What exactly uh -huh. have done? Yes. That way. It works in many ways. Like Achha, that, that's. Six R, it's automatically Purna Atthangi Komagu. I said it briefly, but uh, basically, as you develop your wisdom, develop samaditi, samasankapo, basically, that is to recognize. The more, what we are doing here and now, we've been talking about the Eightfold Path, how it works step by step. This is all part of deepening our wisdom. Deepening our discernment is to like really define what things are really clearly so that then we can work with it. And that's what we've been doing. And this is part of the recognized step. As this gets sharper, we can actually uh, 
uh, know and do things more efficiently. Just to recognize, and that's, that, that is another thing that I, I discovered on my, on my path, was that just to recognize dukkha <laughs> isn't actually bringing you anywhere. Because <laughs> like you're just going to recognize, well, this, uh, like this dukkha, 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 so much dukkha, 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 but then what? What happens? You just know dukkha all the time. So that's not really better. Uh, what, you, what we need is dukkha niroda. Where that's, that's the whole, the core of the path. And that's the release and the relaxed step. So why wisdom? Is, it's all beautiful. It's all beautiful ideas, concepts, and understandings. But if we're not going to apply it, if we're not going to let go of unwholesome states and cultivate wholesome states, then it's, it's useless. So while... Um, Obviously, this works. I mean, this is a, a, a full talk on its own. So, <laughs> this works in many ways. But um, obviously, uh, the virtues are also wholesome states. So they're just the the, the heavier, basically the, the like the, the actions, the the speech, the actions, and then the, the livelihood. Basically, it's just getting more heavy and more coarse. And the more we go towards uh, the mind intention, intention is really that bhavana, is where we, we work with the mind, that meditation. And so as you release and relax, you're letting go of the unwholesome, you're practicing right effort, wise practice, samavayamo. Then uh, you bring up a smile, uh, return to maitri, metta, metta bhavana for now and then uh, what happens is that your mind because of this it gets purified it starts to see things for what they are and that is samma sati it doesn't identify anymore so much because the identifying mind the, the taking things personal mind is all the unwholesome states so when you get angry it's because I don't like it I don't like it and I don't want it to happen and I, I'm getting upset. I'm taking it personal. But when you're loving, when you're uh, helping, when you're giving, these states are selfless. They're not taking it personal. They're just here. You can have it, have it all. <laughs> and so, and it's lighter and the mind just floats. So, as we cultivate loving kindness, joy, uh, the mind doesn't take it personal, the mind is uplifted, it doesn't stick anymore, it just flows. And that is wise awareness, seeing things for what they are, not attaching. And then the mind goes through the jhanas, the samma samadhi. And this is how, by continually doing this, you're practicing the, the whole Eightfold Path. Quick. One of the beautiful things that happens is that some of you might have noticed this already who have been on the path for a while, that as you start to walk the path, it gathers momentum. So when you're starting out, it might feel like little tiny steps, just six hour every once in a while, and then soon you're kind of running. Because as there's more sila, there's more samadhi and more panya, and as there's more panya, there's more sila and samadhi, and as there's more Samadhi, there's more sila and panya. They all feed on each other like this. So for example, as your samadhi becomes sharper, you can see subtler and subtler levels of uh, dukkha. You might notice uh, a small tension that you didn't see before. Use the six hours, relax, and notice even quicker when your mind is pulled away. So like this, it gathers momentum. In uh, the U.S., we would say it's like a snowball, but I'm not sure what the analogy would be here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, what are the six R's? Recognize. Recognize. Relax. Ah, good. Return. Repeat. Very good. Very good. So are you starting to be familiar with it? Now we're, we're saying it with words, but how's the meditation? Do you feel like starting to understand, feeling it, experiencing it? Yes, it's be becoming a little bit more natural. 
little bit Torah Torah. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> okay, very good. Okay, so first step, recognize. Um, I just want to uh, go through the six R's again because uh, it's such an important part of what we do. And as I said, wise practice, samawayamo, is what we do. It's the action of the path. So we really need to understand what we're doing here. And the six R's are actually really hard to beat uh, <laughs> in terms of mnemonic device to remember what to do. Uh, it's uh, like right effort can be a little bit confusing when we're reading it just uh, for line by line and so it's like okay so what am I supposed to do like I'm protecting wholesome states and like pr protecting from unwholesome states and then and then yeah like and then abandoning and then bringing up wholesome states and then maintaining them it's good, it's, there's nothing wrong with it, but the six R's are kind of like uh, making it more accessible to us uh, to, to understand how, how to do this. And so, to recognize, we, th did you want to translate this? Okay. So to recognize is a bit what we've been talking about this whole time. It's part of Panya, it's part of sharpening our discernment, uh, understanding wholesome states and unwholesome states. Recognizing will happen fairly naturally on its own. At one point you'll be in the meditation and think, all right, I was meditating. And then you will do the following steps. So to release, uh, release is um, mostly mental. And one of the, the passages I like the most that uh, really, we find that the release step in the suttas is in the Sabbhasava Sutta, and this is Majjhima Nikaya number two, where, where the Buddha explains uh, all the ways that to uh, let go of distractions, the asavas, basically. There's all these ways by, by discernment, by release, by... Um, huh? Yes, yes, yes. So all the, these ways, there's many ways to let go of distractions. And uh, one of them is by release. And th this is uh, what the Buddha says. When a distraction comes up, one does not continue along with it. One abandons it, releases it, lets it go. One undoes it and brings it to an end. Upannang kama vitakkang. Nadiwasati, Pajahati, Vinodati, Bhyanti, Karoti, Anabhavangamati. So, this is uh, the closest that we can find to this release step, which is mostly mental. We can see that here we're just not feeding our att attention into the distraction. Are you, do you find it? Okay, okay. So, upannang kama vitakang. This is saying kama vitakang, but he also goes through uh, all the... He goes through abhyapadang, uh, uh, and then vihimsa uh, vitakang. Uh, yes. Upannang kama vitakang nadi vasati pajahati vinodati vyanti karoti anabhavang gameti. So. Yes. Katame cha vikave dhamma manasi karaniya ye dhamme na manasi karoti. That is, na manasi karoti or manasi karoti. Uh, yes, yes. That is that, but that's at the beginning. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Testing me. <laughs> Uh, the release one is like close to the end, close to the end of the sutta. I mean, the whole sutta is. Yeah, it's all the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the ways, but uh, only to talk about the release step uh, is is what I meant to, to to bring up here, and then the relaxed step. So, technically, just just to work with the mind is not enough. Uh, it, it will often stay as a mental kind of exercise and we need to go through the body and science is actually showing this more and more that um, I don't know if you're familiar with this uh, practice that is uh, 
uh, somatic experiencing more and more uh, uh, the way that we slowly uh, learn to deal with trauma, for example, in psychology, modern psychology, is to go through uh, practices that go through the body. Because uh, more and more it is acknowledged that uh, we store our, our traumas in our bodies. Uh, and to go through the body is to actually to reconnect with that trauma and then we can actually deal with it. Uh, to see it at, at the root where it is. And so it is the same thing for the hindrances. These hindrances in the mind, they're like mini traumas. <laughs> so, it's, it, but it's really the way it is. Uh, they're like, uh, they're hurt basically, locked up harm, locked up hurt, locked up trauma within our bodies. And when these states of mind arise, they also arise in our bodies. And so, and that's just the genius I think that uh, Bhante Vimalaramsi had like really kind of tapped into that. I think it's really amazing that he really went back to the body and said in the Anapanasati basically following the advice of calming down the body basically. Pasambhayang uh, kaya sankarang. Yeah. So that and that was a major uh, part of his revelation. Basically, was really to calm the body, and that's when he started experiencing the "oh wow" meditation that he called it. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, yeah. you know. and so uh, th this is a quite important instruction because it's not only in the Anapanasati, which is also a whole uh, chapter in the Sanyutta Nikaya. Uh, not to mention the Majjhima Nikaya. It's basically in each of the Nikaya you'll find you'll find these instructions. So it's not only in the Anapanasati, but it's also in the Satipatthana Sutta, uh, Maha Satipatthana Sutta, which are also you know we're talking about very big suttas here. That when when a sutta comes back in more than one Nikaya like the Sabha Sava Sutta, there is a version of it that is very close to it in the Anguttara Nikaya also. Uh, the, these suttas that come back, or like these, uh, these stock passages that come back, when, when they're repeated throughout all the Nikayas, we can know that this was probably one of the most uh, used discourses that the Buddha used. Uh, and it's a really good proof that it's it's quite uh, thorough and universal, basically. And this Anapanasati instructions really are found uh, in every Nikaya, basically, which is, uh, which is quite important. And the Satipatthana Sutta and the Maha Satipatthana Sutta, so basically in two different Nikayas also. And they all have this sequence in it. So this is not like a light, you know, uh, instruction. It's it's quite solidly anchored in the, the Buddha's discourses. And to, to, although one of the problems is that it's misinterpreted, it is interpreted in different ways, but uh, if, we, if we listen to what the Buddha is saying here, he's definitely saying to relax the kaya sankaras. And the kaya sankaras are the activities of the body, the, whatever is the body is made up, uh, that, yes, it can be breathing, but it's not just breathing, it's whatever happens with the body. And so to just calm down the body. And the one way that we see this is when there's tension in the body. So basically, uh, Bhante would say, basically, this, is, this ends up just being mostly around your brain. Whenever there's going to be thinking or distractions, it's going to be tension around your brain and you're going to be able to feel it. The brain kind of contracts or expands or there's all <laughs> kinds of theories about how it happens. It happens. <laughs> I don't know exactly how, but you can feel it. And to, to learn to see this uh, and to relax is extremely important. So um, sometimes you can even take a little bit more time to just do that step properly, to just like relax and feel the relief instantly. This is uh, sandittiko. So this practice is really immediately effective. When the mind is distracted, 
there is tension, you notice that, you release, you relax, you feel the relief, and that is sandittiko. It's not delayed in time, it's akaliko. There is no, you don't need to wait uh, many lifetimes building paramis to see this. It's, you can see it now. Of course, there's, you're going to have to develop a little bit. But, <laughs> but the, the core of it is, is uh, we can see it now. Oh, yes, you should do that. That's your... Could you please translate yes, like, yes. every line? I'll lead them through the exercise. Yes, yes. Okay, so please put your finger in front of you like this and focus on the tip of your finger with all of your attention. And focus very hard so that there is nothing else in your awareness except the tip of your finger. You may notice that there's a little bit of tension in your forehead, a little bit of tension from trying very hard to focus on your finger. This is like when the mind grabs onto a thought, there is some tension there. And now relax that tension in your forehead and open your gaze to the entire room and notice the relief as you release. Okay, Bota Urna Kadla, the Kapala or Satation Kami Hotaka Baga Sagra Jasta Gusti Lakshadi Lur, the Kayote Tension Relax Alur. Okay, could you feel this? Kala for a Kalaka, Eka or concentrate killer, Kayoto, and he tension it over again. So this is like when the mind grabs onto a thought, creates this tension because the mind narrows down. Then you release the thought, but you also relax this, and you feel the relief. So just imagine in 10 days what your mind's going to be like. <laughs> we better not see anybody in the meditation. Yeah, don't do that. I'm going to go to the meditation. 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 I'm going to go to the more and more, that's what you'll notice as you practice this kind of samadhi, basically, that is broad and open, the sampajanya, like all kind of conscious of the whole field of awareness. Uh, you'll notice more and more that whenever you put your mind onto something, that's, that's what the mind is doing, it's latching on. And we need to use this for uh, sometimes, but more and more you'll be wanting to go into this more uh, all-encompassing kind of awareness that is more released, that is uh, not so engaged all the time. And that, that kind of mind is a lot lighter and a lot happier and joyful. And it is a lot more effective in everything. Because when we do these things, then we're, we're, we stay like this a lot of the time. And then it's hard to do things properly. <laughs> so. 
Uh, this is the beauty of uh, mental development and slowly opening up the mind. So this is what we call the relaxed step. When, we, when you hear us speak about the relaxed step, we, we're talking about this. And uh, what, which one, here's a little quiz, which one of the Sambhojanga would that be? The relaxed step. Relax, relax step. Kutla Sambhojanga hai. Sat Bhojanga hai. Sati? Basaddi. Ah, very good. 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 Just have to make sure everybody's awake. Good. Basaddi. Ah. <laughs> yes. Good. Basaddi. And then, what is the next step? The fourth R. Fourth R kai. Re-smile. Re good. Good. Ah, good. And which, <laughs> I'm going to ask a few questions because yes. I think <laughs> this is the time make, making points. So, <laughs> uh, which of the Sambo Janga would that be? Re-smile. Re Re-smile. No, that was, we just named that one. Piti, yes, yes, very good. Uh, Piti, yes. So here, uh, see, we're, we're really working uh, with the seven supports of awakening, the seven Sambhojangas. And the, the re-smiling step is, is, quite, uh, is quite in a lot of places. It is in the Anapanasati when the Buddha says, Piti uh, Patisangvaditi, or Piti Singh. Pati sang wedi. Piti pati sang wedi. Experiencing joy. Sukang pati sang wedi. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I'm checking my poly, but. <laughs> Good. So it is obviously in the Anapanasati, and then there's um, Abhi Pamodayang also, pati uh, sang wedi, like breathing in and out. So there's three steps in the Anapanasati that proves that uh, not only, uh, and also uh, the wise intention of Abhyapada, basically being uh, loving, loving kindness and joy, basically uplifting the mind. And the smiling, a lot of people, <laughs> um, for example, sometimes in my, in my, in my monastery, which is a, a very, uh, you know, Theravadan monastery in a forest in Sri Lanka, and I, I get to, to uh, be in close contact with the classical understanding of this. So people say, like, but the Buddha never taught the smile. <laughs> it's like, Fair enough, okay. Uh, have you ever tried to experience joy without smiling? Can you try now? <laughs> it's pretty hard. It looks like this. <laughs> so it's not really convincing. So really, when, when we feel joyful, when we feel that pity, you know, that it's such a natural expression that we're going to be, you know, uh, uplifted in our face as well, <laughs> in um, smiling. And so... There, there are sutta evidences also in the in the Dhamma Chaitya Sutta, which is 89, of the 87 Dhamma Chaitya Sutta, where the um, King Pasinadi of Kosala goes to visit the Buddha, and he's quite aged, and he sees all these monks uh, smiling and uh, 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 laughing and having basically a good time in in the monastic sense, just being really uplifted in mind and uh, he says wow these monks must have experienced l very lofty stages of of realization to be like s so uplifted and their minds aloof like wild deers and uh, so that's quite that's quite a striking uh, passage in the suttas where we find like an actual like living uh, testimonial that this this was actually happening. But nowadays with uh, science also, which is uh, a wonderful uh, sideline to this, uh, there's, there's been quite a lot of research in that field as well. 
And there's a, an hypothesis which is called the, the facial feedback hypothesis, hypothesis that has been uh, suggested by uh, Charles Darwin and William James that suggested that um, our facial expression does uh, reflect our mental state, but when we also adopt the, um, the same facial expressions, we are also uh, triggering the same reaction in our brain. So, and that triggered a whole series of scientific studies. Uh, and one of them is the emotional faces and biomotion study, uh, which basically is the study where they put a, uh, they had two batches of people and they, in one batch, they would put a finger in people's mouth like this. It's a frowning of the eyebrows and just pinched lip, tight lips. And the other ones were like this. <laughs> so it has nothing to do with, you know, just it's purely mechanical. Um, but they noticed that the people who had tight-lipped and frowned eyebrows, which is uh, replicating a kind of like, you know, uh, the, same, the same kind of expression, like uh, mental expression of tightness and rigidity, uh, these people saw, basically the test was that uh, they were looking at people, like their, 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 the way that they were behaving, like their motion, like somebody walking, for example, and their walking seemed to be more angry or more, um, uh, more rigid. And when the people in the group where there was a, the smiling, uh, they saw the other people's motions to be more happy, more joyful. And so it was quite a significant uh, difference. And th this is one study, there's been many other studies uh, that confirm that really, even if uh, we fake it, <laughs> even if it's not fully genuine, it will get to your brain. It will finally make an imprint on your brain and, sit and tell your brain, I'm happy, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm not happy, no, I'm happy. <laughs> And at some point, you will trick your brain, and it does work. And you should, this is a smiling meditation. You should be smiling all the time. You should be smiling when you're walking around, when you're doing everything that you're doing. And when you're smiling, you're happy. The, met, the metta comes flowing, it comes pouring. It's easy. It's not even hard. It's just happening. And people should look at you and say, like, who's that crazy person just, like, always <laughs> smiling and, like, having so much fun? And it actually works. It's been proven over many years that it, it does work. And people that do smile a lot and smile all the time, they fly through this meditation. It's easy. And so the more you smile, the more you laugh at your mind for being so crazy and thinking all these things, and uh, the more you have fun, the more this meditation becomes easy, easy. <laughs> yes. 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 Good. Be happy. Kushi. Kushi hai. Muskurana hai. Yes. Just like venerable. <laughs> it's actually stuck like that. Yes. <laughs> Good. So I like, I like to call it the fake it till you make it. Uh, and well, but people in this group are pretty happy, so you, I, don't, I don't even think you need to fake it. So you can just make it. <laughs> good. Very good. It's a good group. And then, well, the return step to, to wrap up. Um, this is basically uh, returning to wholesome states. Uh, and this is where this meditation will change throughout the, the course of this 10-day retreat. We are starting with metta bhavana, uh, but it will uh, lighten up. And as the mind becomes very clear and very much more subtle, then these, uh, there will be a progression through the Brahma Viharas. And uh, at the end, which will end in uh, the advanced kind of a Satipatthana practice, which uh, mind is only looking at mind. You don't need to remember this, but I'm just letting you know now. 
the return step is basically to return to the uh, wholesome states that you're developing right now. So right now is your spiritual friend and uh, metta bhavana. And then the repeat. Now that's is a tricky question. So what, which of the sambojanga would that be? The repeat. Repeat. But the sneaky. I. It well, it 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 matures into PT, but Virya, ah, very good. That's exactly what I want to hear. Yes, Virya, because Virya is in the Buddha's teaching. Virya is not, you know, it's not effort or strength, but it's actually being determined, being devoted to what we're doing, doing it all the time persevering and the repeat we only use when we need it as I said we're flying our wings beating our wings and uh, gliding as long as we can until we get a little uh, side, sideways a little bit and then we need to okay adjust uh, but uh, this virya this repeat is to continually do this what that means is that um, sometimes we understand things in the opposite. So let's say uh, you're st you start thinking about what you're going to do after the retreat and then you're going to go to the beach and do something and then you can, like, oh, I'm going to tell that friend and then, uh, oh, we're going to have a cooler with, uh, I don't know, like uh, lemon juice and... Um, Nimbu, nimbu sharad, nimbu, nimbu pani, nimbu pani, yes. <laughs> and then you start thinking about this, and you start thinking about this, and then that's it. You just think about it. <laughs> but there's no, and then the mind starts, oh, well, I'll just read a book. And then I'll read a book, and then, oh, I'll just look at the birds. And then, that, and then there, not, there's no wiria, there's no effort. And the effort is not to actually sit and be really solemn and try to really meditate. That's not virya. Virya is simply to do the six Rs continually as much as you can and to glide on the metta as much as you can. So this is what it is. Repeat. Good. Uh, one sutta that I really like that explains a little bit more about the, the return uh, to the wholesome object, basically, uh, is a, a sutta called Bhikkhu and it's in the Satipatthana Sangyutta, in the Sangyutta Nikaya. Uh, and the Buddha says, uh, these are one of the, some of the best meditation ex instructions that uh, I could found, fa find around this that explain really our practice very well. As one meditates, uh, and of course this is in the Satipatthana uh, Sangyutta, uh, it talks about the, the Satipatthanas, but this is also in so many ways in the suttas, the Buddha explained the Satipatthanas and then he would explain the Brahma Viharas in like re relatively the same way. So as one meditates, aware of body as body. Resting awareness upon body, and here we could say uh, just resting awareness in the metta, basically. Bodily discomfort arises, one's mind becomes lazy or distracted outwardly. Um, then one should apply one's mind to an uplifting object. By doing so, gladness arises. From gladness comes joy. Joyful in mind, one's body is relaxed. Relaxed in body, one experiences happiness. And a happy mind becomes collected naturally. See. Sounds, yes. So, uh, in Pali, this is Pasadaniye uh, Nimitte that uplifting object, that, that sign of the, the nimitta. Pasadaniye nimitte chittang pani dahitabhang pani dahato pamojang jayati pamuditasa piti jayati 
पीति मनसा कायो पसंबति सुखीनो चित्तं समाधियति पीति मनसा कायो पसंबति यस there is one missing here I probably deleted it. <laughs> I just like took the poly and put it there quickly, but I think I might have. Okay. And so um, I just wanted to, it's always good to have the, the sutta reference for what we're doing. And this is the spiritual friend, this, this nimitta, this, um, what's the word? Pasadaniye. Yeah, Pasadaniye nimitte. That is the spiritual friend, or that is the happy memory. That is, so this is what we're using when the mind is distracted. You'll see that when the mind is distracted, also the smile goes down most of the time. You'll notice. That's why we call them the hindrances. They're the hindrances to our own happiness. And it's really easy when the mind kind of like oh, starts going about, and it's like mm, that smile's gone, and the uh, mind is kind of sh shrunken. And then you're like, oh, yes, uplifting object. And then, and then the whole sequence starts again. So um, this is one of the best places to look for uh, the Bhikkhu Pasaya Sutta for, for this section. Bhikkhu Pasaya. This is like Ananda goes to the, the nun's residence, the Bhikkhunis. He's advising the Bhikkhunis. And the, they're, they're doing great. They're doing wonderful progress because they're practicing like this that's what the buddha says so when the laziness comes that's what they say no? yes so uh, yes so basically that is um kaya ramano va upajati kaya saming parilaho parilaho then, uh, because I started as uh, using the six R's as our compass and uh, aiming at the qualities of the first level of meditation. And so, just so we are a little bit more oriented, uh, now we've gone through the Eightfold Path, the six R's, what, what that means is wise practice, Samma Vayamo. And uh, what we are aiming at right now is like when you're uh, going in the wilderness or wherever you're going on a trip and then you're looking at a map and you want to go from point A to point B and this now we're here and we want to go to the first level of meditation for example and what does that mean what is what are the qualities of the first level of meditation and so that is mm, I didn't put the poly there but uh, I'll go in English <laughs> Letting go of all sensory engagement. We witcha wa kamehi. We witcha akusalehi dhammehi. Sawitta kang sawitcha rang. We wake jang piti sukkang. Patama jannang upasampadang. Upasampadja viharati. <laughs> Didn't put it there, but <laughs> I put it there. <laughs> So, letting go of all sensory engagement, that's what I, I like to call the karma. And letting go of all unwholesome mental states. And so, these are, when you're closing your eyes, you're sitting down in meditation, there goes uh, sensory engagement. Most of the senses are gone, let go of. Letting go of unwholesome say, states, akusala dhamma, then as you do the six hours, slowly, slowly, or, or not so slowly, uh, yes. <laughs> then agitation in the mind, mind starts to calm down, you smile, you bring up the metta. Right away, these unwholesome states, they're mostly faded uh, as long as the metta is there, as long as the smiling is there. And this is when I like to cross-reference another sutta, which is the Sangatta sutta the finger snap and even if for the time of a finger snap a monk or anybody practices with a mind of love or loving kindness I say that this person is one who lives practicing jhana or is not void of jhana one who practices the teacher's teaching one who applies his instructions 
and one eats the country's alms undiluted. What to say then of one who would cultivate it? Achara sangatam atampi che bikkave bikku metta chittang asewati ayang wuchati bikkave bikku aritta jano viharati sattu sasana karo owada patikaro amogang ratapindang bunjati Kopanawado Yenang Bahuli Karunti T. Was that comprehensible? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. And so I just really uh, love to bring this sutta up because it shows clearly that when you bring up loving kindness in your heart, when you're happy, when you're joyful, you have a smile. There's no unwholesome state in your mind. It's either one or the other. So yes, of course, at some point it will fade away a little bit. But, <laughs> but as long as you recognize and then you release, relax, then you're not void of jhana, aritta jhano. So you're, not, you're, you're practicing jhana, slowly med practicing meditation. This is not like something esoteric that's unattainable it's attainable here and now and so as you practice this you keep aiming at the first level of meditation and at some point you get there like the grain of rice will puncture through the kama vitakkang and the akusala dhammang so this is yes this is my last uh, advice to you meditators the road has to be taken properly. Yes. Then only the station will come. Yes. Otherwise, yes. Otherwise, you go in on the other side of Mumbai. <laughs> 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 no good. <laughs> so, very good. So, on this, I wish you a beautiful evening, a very happy day tomorrow, and uh, uplift, keep uplifting your mind, practicing the six R's. Uh, this is my advice to you monks meditate <laughs> and uh, for those of you who have the book uh, we'll be reading sharing the merits on page 213 213 213 a little bit I know this much one, two, three. Yeah. Okay. Dukkha patta chani dukkha Bhaya patta chani bhaya Soka patta chani soka Hontu sabbe pipani Idang no punyang sabbe satta anumodantu Sabba sampatti siddhya Aga satta chabhumatta Devanaga Mahidika Punyang Tanga Numoritwa Chirang Rakhandu Sambuddha Sasana Sa 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 Sa